Hi, I'm Doug Atkinson here at Solutions Review, and today we're talking about advanced database technology, uh, and more specifically, uh, something Forrester's term, translytics. Uh, and we're here with an expert, the CEO of VoltDB, David Flower. David, thanks for being here. Thank you very much, Doug. Pleasure. So the term translytics, it's, uh, it's, it's a new term, new to the lexicon. Uh, how does it relate to, to what VoltDB is doing and, and where the future of of database technology is headed. Sure. So translytics really is a combination of two words. So transactions and analytics. So it's a term that's been coined uh, by Forrester. Uh, actually came out about 2016 initially. Um, and could also be attributed to something that Gartner referenced as HTAP, which is again the combination of transactions and analytics. Um, and this is something that the markets, if we come onto that in a moment, has really started to advance, not necessarily around the underlying technology, but really about some major market disruptors that are really starting to have an enormous impact uh, on everyone's lives. Well, and so what is that? I mean, obviously there's, there's big data, as we all like to mm. refer to it as, but, but it's more than that, right? Very much more, Doug. Yeah, very much more. So I think if you look, look at some of the, the trends or the waves within the database or infrastructure market over the past few years, we've seen streaming, we've seen OLAP uh, analytics, we've seen big data, uh, all been very successful with some very, very good companies that have, and great technologies that have come through there. So the real question is, well, what's next and what's driving that? And I think some of the big external market drivers or undeniable disruptors, as some would say, are areas such as 5G. So 5G has, has really moved into view. Uh, and will be rolled out by 2020. In fact, uh, you know, only recently at uh, Mobile World Congress, uh, Vodafone, along with Huawei, actually undertook the first 5G call in history. Um, and so that is now coming up on everyone's radar fast. But what does 5G do? Well, 5G is completely different to any previous technologies used in the mobile world. Uh, and so it's about network slicing, it's about moving everything out to the edge. The capacity that can go through 5G is exponentially larger than we've ever seen in the past. So that opens up fantastic opportunities to develop new applications, manage much more data, but also do that in real time. So transactions in real time. And that's a term that I think is really starting to be better defined. And I think another big disruptor that can explain that and maybe move some of the recent historical waves of technology into view as well will be around analytics. So analytics has always been post-event. So the, the information would flow through, the information would go into warm or cold data stores, big data environments. The data scientists and the analytics tools would run on that and then they'd find data patterns and information at which to reapply to any additional engagements with maybe customers or what that, whatever that may be. The reality is machine learning accelerates every piece of that component. Machine learning speeds up what human beings do in a much more complex way. So what we're now seeing and hearing is analytics become in event, not post event, so, in real time. So, so so the need for speed, the, the, the advancements, the just normal advancements of technology, right? The march continues. But what's the business case? Uh, as somebody thinking about, you know, I have traditional database technologies, why, do I, sure. why should I start to think about this? So I think two things. I mean, legacy databases, I, I won't mention names, but I mean, they're, they're all very well known, but are, are great technologies, great companies, great technologies, designed for a different era not designed for massive scale management. So in memory, for example, that can manage that. Uh, they're not designed to operate in a distributed technology environments out to the edge. They're just not designed for virtualized or cloud deployments. They just weren't designed that way. So new technologies such as Vault are designed to handle these undeniable disruptors that are taking place today. The key thing is if you're driving machine learning that's driving real-time intelligence, what's the value of real-time analytics or real-time intelligence if you don't act on it? That's what Vault does. Well, and that's a fairly large change in, in, in the culture 
of an organization as well, is not only the ability to do it, which is clearly advanced, uh, but what you do with it once you have it. Absolutely. So the smart thing is, is about as data is being processed, and as I will give some, I think, some very simple examples of that in a moment, but as data is being processed, I do apologize, as data is being processed, what you're seeking to do is use the most current information possible to provide the best level of service to that customer or consumer. That's your goal, that's your objective. And you want to get it right every time. Ultimately, that's where Vault and the Vault technology and the design methodology, that's what it's created for. I will give an example. So let's talk about financial services. Vault uh, was selected by Huawei, Huawei's being one of the largest companies in the world, uh, to be its real-time decisioning engine within its Fusion Insight platform. That is designed to do real-time credit card fraudulent detection and prevention. Historically, what would historical da databases be capable of? Information would stream in, the process would take place, it would go into your back-end storage. Then you would identify that as being fraudulent. Well, the damage has been done. Right. It's too late. Right. The fact is, with Vault technology, we can, with our, our customer at Huawei, as a credit card transaction is being processed, because we're using machine learning algorithms that's always constantly, and I mean in sub-milliseconds, being updated through a stored procedures methodology and the rules within Vault, you are being able to identify, detect, and prevent while that transaction is being processed before the damage is done. That's unique. So, so financial services is certainly uh, makes a lot of sense to be one of the first verticals to take advantage of this sort of technology. What other verticals are thinking about sure. uh, how this might work for them? So others uh, where we have customers already today, and uh, I would say visionary customers in terms of the way they use us, uh, some simple things. Gaming. I'm not a gamer. I think I'm a bit, uh, it's a bit past me. But uh, uh, there's games such as Candy Crush from um, Blizzard Activision or the, the King.com uh, group that they acquired. Um, Vault powers the real-time offerings for gamers that are using Candy Crush, playing Candy Crush. So as you want an offer in play, so the right offer to the right person at the right time, Vault is driving that. Well, and that's really pushing it to the edge, right? Is Correct. That, that's when you Correct. really get out to the endpoints. And... It's hyper-personalization, but it's also using current data information, and it's all about time. So I would also say another good example um, would be in telco. So telco and the mobile world, as we mentioned earlier, it, that's all about time dependent. But when you make a call, your operator needs to know who you are, where you are, what policy do you have? Are you able to undertake that transaction? Do you have credit? And then at the end of that, close that off and bill that appropriately. That all has to happen in milliseconds. Has to. Well, and I know this is a fairly recent technology. I mean, in the big scheme of things, not that any of this stuff is all terribly old. Okay. Uh, but where, uh, where would you see companies being held back from moving toward this? I mean, what, what, what would get in the way of a company saying, you know, this, is, this makes a lot of sense? I mean, is it, is it a complicated transition? You know, how do you move in and, and help them think that through? Yeah, is it I through the cloud? Is that the best way? I, I think there's a combination of things. I, I think possibly it may be before that. I think, um, you know, human beings run businesses, uh, not computers today. Well, not yet anyway. But reality is we're emotional people. We're, you know, human beings are emotion by, emotional by nature. And therefore, you ha the cost of the benefit must outweigh the cost of the change. Sure. So I think that is still a challenge that in many large organizations still need to address from an emotional perspective. They need to understand that the benefits that they will see outweigh the cost of change because there is always a cost of change, no matter how simple we seek to make things. Um, I also think that because of the trends around 5G, IoT, machine learning, real-time analytics, everything that's happening in the marketplace today, that is going to accelerate businesses, organizations, and more senior people within those organizations to see what the benefits are. And equally, 
what the risks are by not doing this. Because if they're not actually staying current with the capabilities in the marketplace, then they're going to start losing market share. Well, and so what is the, where's the adoption curve here? I mean, obviously we're early in the, in the, in the phase, but who, who are kind of the, the targets that you're focused at? Are they the, you know, the large enterprise organizations? Are they more specifically vertical? Yeah, a combination of both, I would say. But we are an enterprise technology offering. You know, we have um, phenomenal levels of scale with enterprise grade and carrier grade performance, durability, availability, DR, cross data center replication, everything that you would expect from a traditional legacy RDBMS environment, Vault supports. We were created ahead of our time. We came out of a, a Dr. Michael Stonebreaker uh, academic uh, process. Um, we were designed ahead of our time. We were designed for this time quite frankly. You know, it, now it's all about real time, and real time is in milliseconds, not in batch, not in minutes, not in hours, not in days. The world has moved, and this is what Vault was designed for. Well, and so as we look toward the future, and, 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 and again, this is, this is fairly futuristic thinking, but what, is the, what are some of the drivers? I mean, I know you mentioned IoT, mm. I know you mentioned 5G. Are those really going to be the triggers over the next year or so that, that really mm. start to turn the lights on I at think, the larger yeah, C-suite? I think the three, I think there's three areas there. I think there is 5G, which is, because it's completely new, completely different, opens up, opens up a completely new platform for new applications that could never have been created in the past. I think the second thing is IoT, and IoT and 5G do tend to fit quite closely together. Um, we already have customers today that are using Vault in IoT environments, smart metering. So we are really designed for um, industrial IoT environments, so constant review of manufacturing process. So where you're taking information and constantly adjusting and tweaking your manufacturing process to keep it optimal. Um, we're working with other major organizations in the HPC space, hyper-performance hyper computing, which is constantly monitoring the actual back-end infrastructure to make sure it's operating at an optimal performance. That's using real-time intelligence and making changes in milliseconds to adjust to that. So I think IoT is going to explode. I think 5G is going to be an underpinning capability to deliver that. Um, and I also think that the world is moving from post-event to in-event. And that's really where analytics and real-time intelligence is going to play a part because we want everything now. I want it hyper-personalized. I want it right every time. And I never want to lose any data. That's the goal. Well, this has been great. David, thanks very much for coming. We certainly uh, would encourage you to go to voltdb.com and check out more about the uh, translytic solution that, that VoltDB is offering. Uh, we would also encourage you to go to Solutions Review and check out our buyer's guides and all of the data sciences and categories that we offer. Uh, and once again, thanks very much for coming in. This has been very informative. Thank you very much for having me, Doug. Thank you.